for the JE and as well as for the NEET. So I'm Jairam, your physics faculty. Today we'll be discussing about the one of the important concepts on the for the NEET examination that is atoms. So on analyzing, our experts has analyzed that in this particular atoms, there are certain topics which have been very, very important repeating for the NEET examination. So out of that, this is one of the one, these are the other important things, please. So these are the important topics. One is the Bose model of the atomic model and atomic spectrum and the line spectrum of the hydrogen atom. So now when you see this particular thing, the importance of this particular chapter in the, for the NEET examination, in the previous eight years, you can analyze that atoms has been very, very important thing. So in this one, the Bose model is going to be the one of the repeated thing, 21% times it has been appeared. Okay, and the hydrogen spectrum, what we are discussing these things today. So these are the two very, very important things, which is of the 21% and the 25%, which are going to be uh, appeared in the last eight years. Please. So now coming down to the Bose model of that. So according to the Bose model of that, um, there are certain assumptions here. Bose assumed that the electrons which are revolving around the nucleus will be moving in a circular orbits. Okay, they'll be moving in a circular orbits like this in a specific paths. Okay, so electron will be at one place. This is the nuclear positively charged. These are the electrons which are negatively charged ones. So this is the radius, some radius, the radial distance from the nucleus is there. So now, since they are moving, the force of the Coulombic force of attraction will be there between the positive and negative charges of the nucleus and electron. That Coulombic force of attraction can be written as an FSA equal to it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. That will be into this is Z E into that is the charge of the nucleus by charge of the electron into distance is some R square. Since this electron is moving in a circular orbit, and for any particle which is moving in a circular orbit, this force will be equal to your centripetal force, that is m v square by r. So now, in this relationship, according to this one, so this is the force that we need to identify here. So where the radius can be removed here, so that is your radius of the or the orbit that is uh, which has been moving around the nucleus r can be written as an this is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e square by this is equal to the m v square so now according to the bohr's assumption your angular momentum angular momentum is equal to that is l is equal to general formula mvr which is equal to the n h by 2 pi where n is your Bohr's number of orbit which orbit in which the electron has been moving h is called as a Planck's constant so if i replace this r in this particular relation that is mv into you can substitute the r value as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into that is Z E square by, which is M V square. We have substituted the R value, which is equal to the N H by 2 pi. So if we solve this particular thing, we can get the radius of the uh, both, that is, this is the velocity, which has been left over here. So take down the velocity to the other side. Here, the two will be pi pi will also be canceled here. So this is the nth orbit, and this is your Planck's constant. Take the velocity to the other side, so it will be the z e square by 2 epsilon naught into n h. This is equal to your velocity, and this is the formula for the velocity of the nth orbit. So the most important thing that needs to be remembered here is how the velocity is related to the z and n these are the very very important questions that will be asked in the every in every examination that is velocity is being if, if at all 
you are moving any electron from the first orbit to the second orbit how does the velocity will be changing for an hydrogen uh, atom or hydrogen like atoms also it will be possible so this is the one we have to remember which is the important one now when i substitute this velocity in our relationship where r is equal to this one then we can get the radius of the nth orbit which is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into z e square by m into what is your velocity term that we have got here replace the velocity here which is your z e square by 2 epsilon not into n into h n into h this one will be whole square now on solving this particular relationship that is 1 by this is 4 pi epsilon not i'm just rearranging them here so this will be your z e square into 4 epsilon not whole square into n square into h square by your denominator lies of mass into which is z square e to the power of 4 now solve this one do now the z will be cancelled e square this will be 2 will be left here epsilon not 1 what's the 4 4 will be removed here so your radius of the nth orbit can be written as n which is epsilon not n square h square by pi into m z e square so from this one you can say that rn is proportional to the that is radius of the nth orbit is proportional to the n square by z so these are the very very important things that we are separating from the derivations please so these these are the values you need to remember here so now you can have the different uh, physical quantities related to the nth orbit and the z value that is your suppose if i want to go for the kinetic energy so your kinetic energy formula is simply the half m v square so this is nothing but your velocity of the nth orbit substitute here half m into velocity of the nth orbit is here you do have this one directly i am writing z square e to the power of 4 by 4 epsilon not n square h square this is your velocity so kinetic energy will be related to the m into z square e to the power of 4 by this is 8 epsilon not obviously so epsilon not square we will be going for this one epsilon not square into n square into h square so as this electron is moving in and is a bounded thing it is bounded to the nucleus here so since it is bounded to the nucleus we can have the relationship of the between the kinetic energy and potential energy as that is potential energy is equal to two times of the kinetic energy and your total energy is numerically equal to the kinetic energy so this relation we can use it we cannot use the potential energy is two times of the kinetic energy or kinetic energy is equal to potential energy by 2 at any other place you can use this relation only in the bounded systems bounded systems in the sense here the electron is bounded to the nucleus here you can use this relationship and whereas in the gravitation also you can use this particular relationship so on basis of this one you can say that you can find out the potential energy and kinetic energy or whatever may be the energy it is kinetic energy is proportional to the from this relation it is z square by n square and even your potential energy also it is also proportional to the z square by n square relationship and your total energy will be te is equal to yours are proportional to the z square by n square okay now so or else on solving this one you'll be getting this one as a potential energy is equal to just the same thing here instead of the 8 you'll be getting the 4 and the total energy value is equal to the negative of your potential energy sorry kinetic energy so on substituting all these values that is m value charge value a epsilon not h square all these values you might be using this particular formula in your chemistry first year first chapter that is 
minus 13.6 into z square by n square. So this is your uh, basic thing on substituting all these values. We'll be getting the same thing. In this chapter also, we'll be using the same relationship. So we have got the five relationships with the V, velocity, radius, and the energies, potential kinetic energy space. And from this also, you can have the relationship between the different cases. That is omega, you can find it out as electron is moving around the circle. It will have an angular velocity. And angular velocity can be written as a, this is Vn by Rn relationship. Okay, on substituting the value of your Vn and Rn from this particular relationship, you can find out this particular thing. Okay, so directly I'm writing that is omega of the nth orbit is proportional to the, that is z square by, this will be the n cube. Please be careful of this one here. So this is uh, Vn by Rn, Z square by, it will come out to be the N cube, okay? So these are the formulas that is directly he is asking these formulas. In the examination, please be careful of this one. Directly he is asking these formulas, that is the relation between the certain physical quantity and nth orbit of this one, okay? So next to relationship you can have as you have got the omega, Omega can be written as an, it is 2 pi into frequency. So the frequency also related to the same thing or frequency of the nth orbit of an electron will also be proportional to the z square by n cube. And as we know that the time period is inversely proportional to the frequency. So time period will be proportional to the n cube. Okay, so this is time period of an nth orbit for an electron which is revolving in a circular orbit is equal, is proportional to the n cube by z square. Okay, so now on this particular regard, uh, this is your omega term. So we have got the time period and you can also even calculate the current that has been passing. So current can be written as a charge that is one by time period. You can like this one. So that means I is inversely proportional to the time period. You can write it like this. So that means the current in an nth orbit, since electron is been moving in a circular orbit, since electron is been moving in a circular orbit, In will be proportional to the z square by, this will be the n cube condition space. So these are the very, very important points. Another one that is magnetic field. Since electron is moving in a circular orbit, since electron is being moving in a circular orbit in and around then, if you consider this as a current moving in a circular orbit, then the magnetic field at the center of the circular coil can be written as a formula is, this is mu naught I by, it is 2R. Then substituting the values of your IN and RN values here, then you can say that B will be inversely proportional to the 1 by N to the power of 5. So these are the very, 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 very important relationships that we need to remember uh, regarding the Bohr's atomic model. So now coming to the one of the sum on this particular Bohr's atomic model conditions, please. So the energy required to break one bond in DNA is 10 to the power of minus 20 joules. This value is in this value in electron volts is nearly how much he is asking. So given the information that is an energy in joules and electron volts, this is the value is in electron volts. So given that energy is in which one? Joules and he is asking us to find out in electron volts. So energy, you will have the conversion factor that is one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So this is the basic thing for the conversion. That means 10 to the power of minus 20 joules will be how many electron volts? Just cross one. So how do we convert this particular thing here? So if the electron volts, this is a major important point that every student has to remember this one. So what is this important point? He might be asking you in electron volts. He might be asking you in the joules. So you should be careful in answering the questions should be very, very careful in answering the questions, whether he has asked in 
joules or whether he has asked in electron volts please be careful in which situation or in in which format he has asked you the question so try to remember all these values first thing is that is velocity of the nth orbit is the ve velocity of the nth orbit is proportional to the inversely proportional to the n and directly proportional to the z and velocity and the radius of the nth orbit is inversely proportional to the n square the radius of the, the radius of the nth orbit is inversely proportional to the n square and energy also inversely proportional to the n square whereas your omega that is angular frequency is whereas your angular frequency is directly proportional directly proportional to the n cube please directly proportional to the n cube and time period is inversely proportional to the n square n cube so time uh, current will be directly proportional to the n cube and magnetic field will be inversely proportional to the n to the power of 5 so these are the very very important things you have to remember please so try to remember this particular very very important points so don't forget them please don't forget to remember these particular points so next important topic that we are going to study in this particular case is the uh, that is the one which is called as your the atomic bose atomic spectrum so this bose atomic spectrum condition when you come down to the bose atomic spectrum conditions what is this bose atomic spectrum condition is so whenever the this uh, all these factors are been related or else whenever an electron tries to jump from an higher energy level to the lower energy level generally bose has proposed this spectral or energy different formulas for the hydrogen but you can also use for the hydrogen like atoms also you can also use this particular things for the hydrogen like atoms also okay so please be careful of this one and the energy formula can be related and, and energy formula it can be equated to the minus 13.6 z square by n square minus 13.6 z square by n square these are the things you need to remember from the one or when it, when an electron jumps from an higher energy level to the lower energy level it releases certain energy and when an electron jumps from a lower energy level to the higher energy level it absorbs certain energy and moves from the lower energy to the higher energy level. so as energy formula you can write it as an minus 13.6 into Minus thirteen point six into z square by n square, minus thirteen point six into z square by n square. As you have connected this one, so Ganesh Garu, Nara Mir, are you there, Ganesh Garu? Could you please give me the permission for the sharing, please? Ganesh Garu, are you there, please? Please give me the permission for the sharing. Just, just a second, Anne. We are trying to reach him. Yeah. yeah. So as the energy in the lower energy state is minus thirteen point six into z square by n square, so n value is going to be one if I take for an hydrogen where the z value will be one. Then the energy of the lowest energy state that is called as a ground state we can call it as a minus thirteen point six. Okay, no problem. When the electron goes to the first excited state, where the n value are going to take it as a two. Then what will be the energy of that particular state, which is minus thirteen point six into same hydrogen? That is, z value will be one, and n value will be two. Two square will be four. So in the sense, minus thirteen point six by four, which will be minus three point four. So that means the energy state. That means the energy state of. That means the second energy state will have an energy of minus three point. Four electron volts, whereas the ground state will have an energy of minus thirteen point six. The difference in the energy is ten point two electron volts. Okay, so if you know these values, you have to be perfect with these values. The energy required to jump from a lower energy state to the higher energy state. 
lower energy state to the higher energy state then you should give an energy of 10.2 electron volts energy has to be provided there you should give an energy of 10.2 electron volts of energy should be provided there okay so here we are there actually so you can divide this particular thing your x value obviously you will be getting in electron volts fine so as we have started the next topic that is atomic spectrum so the energy required to jump as earlier i have written your formula energy required is minus 13.6 into z square by n square so as i have told you the lowest energy level that is for the n is equal to 1 the energy required is minus 13.6 electron volts and the next energy level will be n is equal to 2 where it will be minus 3.4 as i have told so how can you calculate you just substitute here n value is equal to 2 where the z value will be 1 where the difference of the energy will be equal to the 10.2 electron volts and for the next energy level if i want to go where n is equal to 3 we will be substituting that is n value third energy state as minus 13.6 into 1 square by this will be 3 square So, which is minus thirteen point six by nine, and that will be equal to your minus of that is one point or one point uh, around. It will be one point five electron volts will be coming. That means you need nearly an one point nine electron volts of energy difference will be there positive. So, this much energy is being required ten point two. These values has to be remembered. the value of this one will be around 1.5 electron volts so please remember these values because in the examination we cannot calculate all the way so it's heavy calculation so we need to remember these values suppose if any electron is provided with this 10.2 and there is an atom consisting of the nucleus like this and there is an electron here if some neutron sort of a thing is coming and hitting this particular hydrogen atom itself let us imagine it's an hydrogen atom itself and if it is carrying some 10.2 electron volts initially and after colliding there is neutron's velocity is zero after collision neutron's velocity is zero and velocity of the atom is also zero that means both of them have came to rest or they are in the rest position then what happens to this total energy this total energy is transferred to the electron so that it can move from the ground state to the first excited state like this so these type of the questions will be asked so please be careful of these type of the questions please okay na so in these nuclear collisions will be perfectly an elastic collisions you can okay you considering the loss of energy also so that means the initial momentum will be equal to the final momentum p final so from this one you can write this one as initial momentum is nothing but an mass of the neutron into velocity of the neutron or this is the one initial momentum both of them will be equal in any way because no external force is acting over here that is the mass of the atom for the remaining atom and mass this is the velocity of the atom so this is the relation that we can use since law of conservation of momentum is been valid in this case and according to the law of conservation of energy where i am taking the lost energy also so the kinetic energy of the neutron is equal to or which will be whatever is going to be the kinetic energy of the neutron initially is equal to the after collision if the both of them combine that means kinetic energy of atom plus delta e delta e is called e is called as a lost energy and it can be written as an p n square by 2 into mass of the neutron which is equal to the p into that is momentum of the atom square by 2 into this will be the mass of the atom plus lost energy by using this relation you can find the lost energy so much we can replace the neutrons momentum with the this is nothing but the momentum of the neutron this is nothing but the momentum of the atom you can replace one with the other so that you can calculate the lost energy so much always the energy difference can be calculated as 
that is energy of the second orbit higher energy orbit minus lower energy orbit so if i substitute these values that is minus 13.6 into z square by which is n2 square minus of minus 13.6 into z square by n1 square so this is how you can find out the energy value which if i take the plus 13.6 z square is common the internal part will be 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square you can find the either the energy released or energy absorbed if an electron jumps from a lower energy to the higher energy or from higher energy state to the lower energy state so these things you can use it at any instant sir please so remember it always works on this particular formulas only it will not deviate from these relations and these values please be careful it's a very 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 important concept in the here so now in this this type of the question here the ratio of the wavelengths of the last line of the bama series and the last line of the lehman series what do you mean by lehman series here so what is the lehman series is when a transition takes place from any orbit to the first orbit it is called as a lehman series can i write the lehman series value as a 1 by lambda is equal to hilbert's constant r into this is 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square formula so from this one for the lehman series n1 is equal to 1 which is fixed and n2 value will be 2 comma 3 comma so on up to infinity okay na so these are your basically the lehman series conditions so what are the minimum and maximum values of the lehman series conditions please so do you uh, these are the best, that means the short wavelength and the longer wavelengths are very very important so when you call it as a shorter wavelength shorter wavelength in the sense lambda is this is the relation so shorter wavelength values and the longer wavelength values you please try to remember shorter wavelength will be immediately n by immediate next number that is n value has to be the 2 if the transition takes place from the immediate next orbit to the base orbit if it's called as a shorter wavelength and longer wavelength will be from the infinity to the base orbit is called as your longer wavelength longer wave length so these things has to be remembered please so try to remember these particular value uh, values this is the lehman series so first one is the lehman series second one is your bama series what is the bama series specialty is the transition can takes place bama series the transition will be taking place from any other orbit to the second orbit except one that is the formula can be written as n 1 by lambda is equal to r of 1 by n 1 square minus 1 by n 2 square where n 1 will be equal to the 2 and n 2 values will be all greater than 3 3 4 5 4 on up to infinity now according to this question what do you mean by last line of the lyman series last line of the lyman or the bama series will be from the infinity that means if i take the first one as a bama series i am taking it as a lambda one is equal to r into 1 by 2 square minus 1 by infinite square and another one is so what will be the 1 by lambda one value here 1 by lambda one is equal to this will be the r by 4 or you can take the lambda one is equal to 4 by r now similarly go for the lyman series study second one that is 1 by lambda 2 is equal to r into 1 by 1 square minus 1 by infinity square anyway 1 by infinity will be obviously zero your 1 by lambda 2 is equal to r or your lambda 2 is equal to 1 by r you can write it so now he is asking the ratio of their wavelengths that means lambda 1 by lambda 2 is equal to which is 4 by r by which is 1 by r you can remove the r and your ratio will be the 4 is to 1 so this will be your condition sir so always remember this lehman series bama series five series is are there we are having lehman series bama series passion series bracket series and the p fund series okay bama series is this one 
passion series C is n value will be three, and n two will be ranging from four, five, six like that. So it will be extending like in an order wise. So here we can discuss about the line spectrum and this one. So as I have already discussed about here, the Lyman series and the Bama series, you can have the passion series as an So where the formula will be same, that is one by lambda is equal to, okay na, one by lambda is equal to r into this will be the one by n one square minus one by n two square, but n one value will be as three, and n two values will be changing from the four comma five comma so on up to infinity. Okay now, bracket series. So that will be the one by lambda is equal to r of one by n one square minus one by n two square. Here you can put it as a three square. Here I'll be writing it as a four square for the Bama series. That means n one is equal to four, and n two values will be ranging from five, six, so on up to infinity. And last one is P fund series. So in this P fund series. Same relationship, but the transition will be taking place only up to the fifth one from any other orbit which is greater than five. That is, n value is n one is equal to five, and n two values will be six, seven, so on up to infinity like this. So these are the basic thing. And for any hydrogen or hydrogen-like atom, you can use the energy formula E is equal to minus. 13.6 into z square by n square relationship, or you can use the energy difference that is delta E is equal to that is 13.6 into 13.6 into z square of 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. So use these relations, please, to solve any particular energy related sums or the lambda values or the Directly the energy values and all these things, substituting the h value that is energy can be written as an h c by lambda. Substituting the h values, e values, and the corresponding z values here, this will be converting nothing but a Rydberg's constant. Yours that is one point one into ten power minus seven. So these are the important conditions that you can go through in this particular chapter, sir. So another question related to this one, he has given the Rydberg's constant that is one point. You can take the approximate value he has given itself in the question. The R value is equal to one point one. Generally, you can take it as in ten to the power of seven, or exact value if you want, it will be the one point zero nine into ten to the power of seven. So for for our calculation purpose, you can go for one point one. But in this question, he has confined it to take to the value of ten to the power of seven. The wave number of the last. Line of the Bama series in the hydrogen spectrum. So, what is the wave wave number means? One by lambda is called as your wave number. Okay, na. So that is wave number is. So this wave number concept or wave number related sums you can also encounter in the uh, ray optics also, where we'll be using the lambda terms that is optical. Path or optical distance. There also he'll be you will be try need to find out the wave number which is one by lambda. One by lambda into your last line he has asked. Since it's a Bama series, it will be two square minus infinity square. So one by lambda is equal to ten to the power of seven into. This is one by four. What is the value of the one by four? Is zero point two five. Into ten to the power of seven, sir. So these are the conditions, please. So from this one, you can choose the order is the option. All these sums are the previously related sums. So please, please, because we have collected all the information, a very very important sums, important theoretical information, important uh, model questions. Not only from the previous NEET examinations, but also the models, different models we have covered. A lot of more sums are there on this particular atom atoms, 
in our app or in our website whatever is going to be so please register yourself or go for the subscription so that you can use those all sums for practice and enhance your skills in this particular chapter or not only in this particular chapter but every chapter on using this particular prom promo code that you can see it on the screen that is jn10 using this particular promo code you can avail a 10% discount on this particular subscription value so please utilize this particular this is your it might be in terms of amount for you but actually it gives you a lot of value or lot of information or lot of practice problems for you which you cannot get any particular place or any particular site okay in a, in a given site you might be getting five sums or 10 sums that's it but on taking the subscription of this one you can have the more number of the sums you can do it that will be utilized for you in getting a nice score or nice rank in the need please so now coming to the questions please so these are your questions you need to solve here right now whatever you have learned hope you have understood whatever we have uh, i have explained to you so now in the spectrum of the hydrogen you try it out first i will also try so he is asking the longest wavelength what do you mean by the longest wavelength of the lyman series and the longest wavelength of the bamber series so as in this case the lambda 1 by lambda is equal to r into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square here so as i have told you to, to remember this longest wavelength and the shortest wavelength. so here you are not finding the lambda directly so you are finding the 1 by lambda so for the shortest wavelength for the shortest wavelength to need to find it out so obviously for the lyman series you know that n1 value will be 1 okay for the n1 value will be obviously 1 for you and what will be the n2 values for the lyman series as i have already discussed you and i am again repeating this for you please again repeating this one n values will be starting from the 2 3 so on like this up to infinity so now we are discussing for the shortest wavelength here so for the shortest wavelength conditions your n value has to be the infinity that is n2 value has to be from the infinity and n1 value should be 1 for the longest wavelength your n1 value should be 1 for the lyman series and n2 value will be immediately the next one so that is 1 by lambda is equal to r of for the lyman series it will be 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 square that is the r value it will be the 3 by 4 this is the 1 by lambda 1 or 1 lambda l or from this one lambda l can be written as n that will be the 4 by 3 r next for the bama series the same formula 1 by lambda is equal to r into 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 3 square here so this is for the lambda b so lambda b 1 by lambda b is equal to r into 1 by 4 minus 1 by 9 So on solving this one, R into LCM will be 36, sir. So 9 minus this is 5 by 36 here, or your lambda B will be the 36 by 5 R. Now he is asking both the ratios. So that means lambda L by he is asking by lambda of the B. You can put down the what is the lambda L is 4 by 3 R by. This is 36 by 5 R. So R R will be cancelled. You can write it as an 4 into 5 by 3 into this one is 36. This goes for nine times. That is 5 by 27. This will be your option, sir. So these are the types of the questions, please. Now can you calculate this one? Try it out, please. what is asking in the question the ratio of the kinetic energy and the total energy of the electron 
in the bore hydrogen atom as i have already mentioned you what is the here we have discussed it sir please look at this this is your energy relation sir so here we have got the energy relation kinetic energy we have already discussed this one please so remember this particular case okay and moreover here i have written the re uh, relation between the total energy and the kinetic energy he is asking you the kinetic energy by total energy is how much kinetic energy by total energy will be the minus 1 is to 1 is 1 only right sorry 1 is plus 1 by minus 1 this will be the ratio so their values will be same in either cases in all the cases but kinetic energy will be the positive sign and whereas your total energy will be negative sign so your kinetic energy by their magnitude will be same okay so it will be only the 1 by minus 1 or i can put it as an minus 1 here right so this is the directly related if you are thorough with the theory then it will be comfortable for you to solve these questions please okay so the total energy of an electron in an hydrogen of an electron in an atom is minus 13.4 is asking so that means the total energy t is equal to minus 3.4 electron volts that means your kinetic energy should also be 3.4 but it should be the plus sign and what is the relation i have written to you that is potential energy is equal to two times of kinetic energy with a negative sign which is minus of 2 into g 3.4 that will be the minus 6.8 electron volts this is what he is asking sir he is asking its kinetic energy and potential energy that is plus 3.4 and Minus six point eight. This is the another question. If you are thorough with the theory of the atoms, it will be very, very, very easy for you to solve the sums, so that you cannot lose the sums from this particular chapter or the concept. Please be careful. Read it thoroughly. Read it properly. Okay. If you have any doubts, you can ask me, sir. If you have any doubts, you can ask me now. So if I go for the another question, it's an hydrogen atom. Immediately note down the information. Hydrogen atom since so Z value will be one. Comes from some excited state. Comes from a excited state. He is asking. So what is that excited state? The we don't know. Suppose if I take it as an some yen here. Ground state by emitting a photon of wavelength lambda. the principal quantum number n he is asking it is coming to the ground state that means your n value will be 1 so this is the information given in the question he is asking now we can write further this is at line spectrum that is 1 by lambda is equal to redbergs constant into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square this one so from this one replace the values r into n1 will be 1 But n2 value is an unknown value. He is asking that value is going to be how much? This is one by lambda. Bring the r to the other side, sir. So that will be the one by lambda into r is equal to this will be one minus one by n square from this one. One by n square is equal to one minus one by lambda r. Take down the LCM here, please. That is one by n square is equal to lambda r minus one by Lambda r and from this one get the n is equal to inverse this one that will be under root of lambda r by this will be the lambda r minus one. Okay, so this is a major important thing. Please, please be careful of this one. So now this is another question which can be you can solve this one easily or comfortably. Here this is another question ratio of the kinetic energy to the total energy. obviously the magnitude of the kinetic energy is equal to the magnitude of the total energy but your kinetic energy is new is equal to the negative of your total energy he is asking for whatever may be the state here he is he has given this particular statement for nth quantum state to confuse you you whether it is whether the ratio of the kinetic energy and total energy are going to be changing with respect to the nth state okay with respect to the nth state 
whether they might be changed, they will not change and the ratio will be this one. As we have solved the earlier sum, so as we came to the end of this particular session, again, I request you to get the subscription and use the promo code to take the advantage of all the very, very important problems that we have sorted out and placed for the students for their enhancement, you can get the advantage of that particular thing. Please be careful of that one. Right. So by this, I'll close this particular session.